In Michigan, what happened to Kimberly King? The mystery has devastated her family for decades. She was just 12 when she vanished almost 40 years ago. Well, now Warren police are taking a fresh look at this cold case. A new Prakash talked to Kimberly's family and her best friend about the last night she saw her. This case goes so far back that the original report is on microfiche, but even though so much time has passed, Kimberly's loved ones are still hopeful this will be solved. It's a date I won't forget. That day is September 15, 1979, when Connie Bama's beloved little sister, Kim, vanished. Her life was probably taken, taken from her that night at 12 years old. Connie says Kim, a student at Lincoln Middle School, was spirited, good-hearted, and a risk taker. It was a Saturday. Kim had gone across the street from her grandparents' home where she lived to her best friend Annie's house. She told her family she was spending the night there, but around 11.30 that night, Connie got a call. Kim was looking to talk to their older sister. Kim said she was calling from the corner of Nine and Hoover, very close to their grandparents' house. And I asked her to go right back home. I was shocked that she was out that late at night. And she said, but I'm spending the night at Annie's right across the street. And I said, then please go back to Annie's right now. And she said she would. But that never happened. 16-year-old Connie had no way of knowing that would be the last time she'd hear Kim's voice. In the morning when I phoned my grandmother and asked for Kim, I was told she wasn't there. She hadn't come home. Her family reported her missing to Warren police, but at the time, investigators considered Kim a runaway. However, Connie says Kim never would have left them. She wouldn't leave my older sister and I to worry about her. She wouldn't scare us that way. So Connie and her older sister searched themselves and heard that Kim had made her way to 11 and Gratiot in Roseville that night. The days turned to years and no sign of Kim, only age progression images guessing what an older Kim would look like. In the early 80s, after a story in a local paper about Kim's unsolved case, Roseville police got an anonymous letter and a map saying Kim was dead and buried in Shelby Township. Police searched but found nothing and then deemed it a hoax. They didn't put any weight in the the letter. They just felt it was, um, you know, someone that felt sorry for the family. Someone who really did want to find the truth was the last known person to see Kim that night, her best friend Annie. I feel like that day or those 48 hours maybe are scorched into my brain. Um, I'll never forget them. Annie says Kim liked to go hang out at night. Kim would tell her family she was sleeping over when actually she'd leave Annie's and not return until the next morning. She told me that she cruised Gratia. Did she say how she was getting around? I mean, she was 12. Uh, hitchhiking. Annie still remembers the last time she saw Kim on that September night. They were in her backyard when Kim left. Kim actually like hopped the back fence and didn't go home and then I just went in my house. So the next morning I was expecting her to be back at my house at like seven o'clock. But Kim never showed up. The grandma called and said, you know, tell Kim to come on home. We're gonna go to the cider mill now. And I said, okay, I'll be right there. And I just hung up and ran across the street and told them everything I knew. She was like an older, an older personality. And I think that that may have had something to do like if she was out on grass ship pretending like she was, you know, 15 or 16 years old you know, ran in with the wrong crowd, um, and that may have led to her demise. Annie is now a wife and mother of two and looks back and wonders what could have been. Um, and then prom, there's me. Annie says she's forgiven her 13-year-old self for not telling an adult what Kim was up to. Maybe something will link something so that we can get closure. And just a couple of weeks ago, after 38 years, Annie says she was interviewed by Warren Police for the first time. That's a better picture. They're taking a deeper look at it now with some fresh eyes, but say finding people from the original investigation is challenging. But a cold case doesn't mean closed case, and we've been able to connect some dots, but not enough to develop the whole picture. Connie Bema is glad they're taking a closer look at the case. In her heart, she doesn't believe Kim is still alive, but wants to bring her home. She says she will never quit. It's the most important thing in my life. Until we find her, it will always be the most important thing in my life. Right now, Warren police are looking to speak with anyone who knew Kimberly King at the time she disappeared. If you were a classmate or a friend of hers, please give them a call. In Warren, Anu Prakash, 7 Action News. That's good to know they never stop looking. Exactly.